Hi guys, it's Heather, the Butterfly Effect plant-based weight loss. And today I wanted to make a video and go a little bit more in depth into what I'm doing for my 100 day plan. So what I did so far is I showed you what I'm eating and why I chose what I'm eating and um, what I'm not doing, which is weighing in. But I wanted to talk a little bit more. I got some questions in my Facebook group, um, which is also called The Butterfly Effect. Um, it's called Plant-Based Transformation over there. And so if you ever have a question, that's a great place to ask it. You can also ask in the comments. And I try to reply. I reply as much as I can. But um, someone in the Facebook group asked, you know, what are the other elements to your system because I believe in atomic habits which are tiny habits which are part of a system when taken all together they're powerful just like atoms are tiny but when you put them all together you know you get form and function and sometimes you know it can be an explosion like an atom bomb right so it can be wildly pop powerful tiny things taken together can be extremely powerful is the whole idea um, and there's a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear that I really recommend um, he's one of the people that I have studied BJ Fogg at um, Stanford is another person who has the like lasting change laboratory what what causes people to make lasting change I'm at a point in my life where I'm not the, uh, that interested in temporary change. It was pretty devastating to me to get to my goal weight. Um, October 18th, 2017, I totally got to my goal weight. I got to 136 pounds. I had taken off 300 pounds and then I put back on 90 and I had a really hard time getting it back off again. Now there was a lot of things that happened I, I could point to a lot of different things, but what I'm doing now um, is looking toward how I can, I'm not only absolutely sure that I'm gonna get there, but I wanna make it last, if that makes any sense at all. Okay, so without further ado, other things that I'm doing for my 100 day plan, um, and I have notes, so forgive me for looking at my notes, but I put down number one is a mindset. Um, every day I check in with my mindset, examine my thoughts by doing a thought download, which is just literally what's on my mind today. Um, I see what my thoughts are and if they're serving me. And when I think that thought, I ask what feeling it's creating and whether I like that feeling and what the actions are likely to be as a result of that feeling. And so... <clears throat> Um, this is just journaling, right? Just get it all out there. Look at the thoughts. Are the thoughts serving you? If they're not serving you, then you can change your thoughts and get in the right mind frame. Um, I renew my commitment every day. So I, by, by doing my journal, I am reaffirming that I absolutely am 100% committed to following this through. I um, make a plan for myself for the day and I hold myself accountable to how well I followed my plan the day before um, and what I need to do to ensure that I follow it today. So for instance, I write down every day what I will eat today. I write down what I said I would eat yesterday. I write down what I actually ate yesterday and the three, sh the, uh, the, the bottom two should match, right? It should be what I said that I would eat. Um, I don't always do it the night before. I often do it the day of, but as long as it's before I have eaten anything, it seems to work really well for me, committing my food, just writing it down, exactly what I'll eat. I do the same thing with steps, and I say how many steps I got yesterday, oh, well, how many steps I'm gonna get today, how many I got yesterday and how many I said I would get yesterday to see if they match also. Um, and that is not working for me as well as the food. Um, sometimes 
I, I tell you why. Um, it's because I have been getting really tired, but it isn't necessarily, and I've been doing a lot of exercise, but it isn't necessarily things that would show up on my Fitbit. So if I'm cleaning like crazy in my house, but a lot of it involves um, like bending over and stationary in one point, you know, in one place or um, same thing. I was doing a lot of gardening, which is a lot of lifting and carrying and doing all kinds of exercise and getting really tired. But a lot of it is bending over and weeding. So I'm not getting like a lot of movement that'll register on my Fitbit, but my legs sure know I'm doing it. Anyway, um, holding myself accountable. I'll try not to go off track. Um, in this journal, I also track um, hours of sleep. I track things that aren't food or steps, um, things that I say that I will do because managing the details of my life, boy is this true, managing the details of my life and things I have to do manages my stress and failure to manage stress is like a great way to go downhill fast, right? So I make a plan for things I need to do and then I hold myself accountable to actually do those things and that helps me manage my stress. So that's all under mindset. Um, the second thing that I do is just that definition. I already have a firm definition of what I do eat and what I don't eat so that I can follow it exactly, right? So what I don't eat is any animal products, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and I keep my salt very, very low. Like I try to avoid salt every way I can and I don't add any salt. Um, and so by having that definition, if I don't, if I know I don't eat any of those things and that pretty much rolls out any processed food at all, <laughs> then I know by definition I do eat salad, I do eat steamed vegetables, I do eat fresh fruit, and I do eat um, a little bit of starch. So potatoes or sweet potatoes or, um, you know, brown rice, things like that. <clears throat> Quinoa. All right, um, preparation. I already know what I'm gonna eat for the day, so I shop for my produce. Um, I always have my fridge full of healthy produce. I make it easy to succeed and hard to fail. So environment is huge. That's part of preparation to me. Keep your environment so that you, um, so that everything you need to be successful is right there and anything that you want to keep out of your life, you make it difficult. Like I would have to get in the car and drive somewhere and go get something if I wanted it. Um, and that gives me time to talk myself out of it, right? Um, I take the time to prep my salads and my veggies. I don't always batch cook, but I always have like two days worth at a time because I want, um, like it's just as easy to make two days as one day. Um, the only reason I don't batch cook is because of refrigerator space. I have five people in my family and so there's just sometimes it's hard to batch cook. Simplify is my next thing. I keep my meals very simple and I standardize them. I already talked about this on the last video but um, I make simple recipes and I avoid all the things I don't eat. Um, I avoid salt and high fat of any kind or any processed food because it encourages overeating. So I keep my meals very simple and you guys know I eat salad for breakfast, I eat steamed vegetables for the next meal, I eat fresh fruit as like a four-ish, five-ish snack and then I have some small amount of starch um, and more vegetables for dinner. And while the veggies might change, the pattern doesn't. What the, what the contents of the salad might change slightly, but the pattern does not. Okay, sequence. I always sequence my meals and I just, I do it in the order that I just told you. Um, movement, I aim for 15,000 steps a day, um, but movement is more than just exercise to me. Movement, I wrote down, is also stress control time because it's very true, um, it's very helpful for me. Movement is spiritual communion time, so it's my time to talk to the Creator. Um, 
movement is connecting with nature time for me and movement is also learning time because I often will do listen to like a podcast or something um, and that is or I listen also sometimes to like church services on um, especially on Sunday morning I'll listen to church service while I'm walking so all of those things are tied up in walking which is why walking is my favorite kind of exercise but I also dance I lift weights I garden and I do simple yoga stretches um, sleep I do everything I can to get at least seven and a half hours of sleep um, I want more <laughs> I want as much as I can get but I do make it a priority so my friends and my family know that you, you know I wake up very early in the morning because I have to to get ready for work and to get my exercise in and get all my food prepped and everything before work and so people don't really call me after nine o'clock at night because I'm definitely in dreamland <laughs> um, yeah I'm hopefully asleep um, support is a big thing I check in by with friends mostly by messenger by Facebook messenger a lot um, also just on Facebook in general and somewhat by phone somewhat by text but I'm always checking in with people I'm always getting that support okay so the next one these are gonna take a little longer to define but I um, I say part of my system is no overeating so first you have to define overeating because it doesn't necessarily mean eating a very large volume of food I can be eating a lot of vegetables and salad and fruit um, and not be overeating because my definition is overeating it for is eating for anything other than hunger and it's so if I'm eating for anything other than hunger I consider that overeating or if I'm eating more calories than my body requires um, to run my body right so then that's that's by definition overeating um, and so it's not a quantity thing necessarily it can be but I eat very low calorie density food and so I get to have a large quantity you have seen how much salad how much veggies I eat it's a lot so if I am eating in response to boredom or to a craving which are my two main things that I eat in response to that is by definition overeating because it's not because of hunger um, and yeah it's um, so that's it can be though it's like if I'm eating because I'm hungry and then I'm no longer hungry but I keep eating because the food tastes good that is also overeating um, it becomes eating for entertainment and I'm going to define that as overeating so you don't have to like my definition of overeating you can have your own definition but that's what that's what I have decided that it is for me so it's eating outside of hunger so I'm only eating when I'm hungry and I'm stopping when I'm like mildly full um, not all the way stuffed and I don't eat except for fuel right so um, I'm not eating in result of cravings or boredom or an emotion or any of those things I consider overeating all right, so the last part um, is allowing urges without giving in to them or resisting them. I talked to this, I talked to you guys about this a little while ago um, when I was telling you I have a little jar that I fill with quarters. Um, so basically, <clears throat> I learned this from an instructor called Brooke Castillo. Um, and if I haven't, urge to overeat or if I have an urge to eat something I don't eat at all um, I just allow that urge so what I mean by that is um, I don't resist it resisting an urge is like wrestling with it right it's just gonna wear you down you're gonna be in that willpower mode where you're resisting it but you're using up all your willpower and draining it fast and you only have about 20 minutes worth of willpower right um, 
I think of that as like, I'm pining for it, but I'm not letting myself have it, right? Resistance is often accompanied for me by feelings of like being deprived or feeling sorry for myself that other people get to have it and I don't get to have it. So I'm, I'm avoiding resisting, right? I'm not like that actively, er, I'm trying to keep myself from having you kind of thing. Um, resisting sometimes feels like panic to me in my body. Like, um, like I can't trust myself and I might just start shoveling it in my face, you know, um, and not be able to stop like a woman possessed, right? It, it can feel like that. It can feel that like desperate, I can't have you, but I'm trying really hard. It's kind of like a white knuckling thing. I would often do that when I would walk white knuckling. Um, and it's a feeling, but the thought that's producing that feeling is false. Um, and I know this, I can tell myself, you know, that, that the thought that I, that's producing the feeling is false because even when I was shoving things in my mouth and totally binging in the past, I knew dang well what I was doing. Like I was net, there was never at any point that I was just, you know, um, unable to stop if I really had wanted to. For instance, if someone had walked in on me um, eating a gross amount of food, you know, or a large amount of food, I it, that would have influenced me, right? So I was in control of my actions. Um, I just chose to do it. And basically, I just wanted to get my authentic self to step out of the way and let me basically get high on the food, right? Like that's with binging, I knew what I was doing and I was using food like a drug to change my state. Um, just like you can take a pill to get high or whatever, I was using food to change my mood. Um, like if I was bored or if I was sad or if I was avoiding doing something um, that I was supposed to be doing that wasn't as fun, um, or just eating to numb feelings or escape circumstances. So if I'm not resisting the feeling and I'm not giving into it, what do I actually do? So what I'm practicing is being in a mindful space where I'll notice that I'll want to overeat. Like I'll be like, this really tastes good. I wanna keep eating it or I wanna eat more, but I know I've had enough or if I'm craving something that is not something that I eat, or if I'm um, just any of the overeating that I defined before, I'll just watch myself as though I'm outside myself. So I'll be like, hmm, I'm, I'm having an urge to do that. That's interesting, you know? And just be the watcher, go into that meditative place you know, like when you're meditating and you're not your thoughts, but you're the person watching yourself think, right? So it's that same kind of a mindful experience of like, hmm, yep, I'm wanting this right now. I want to do that. Yep. And so I'm not resisting it, but I'm just feeling the feeling. And so that means that I have to be willing to do whatever it is that I was trying to get out of, right? So I have to do the work or that I didn't want to do like the assignment or something that I should be doing or I have to feel bored or I have to feel my feelings. I have to feel sad or I have to feel happy and not eat because I'm happy. So you, do you see what I'm saying? So I'm just being mindful with that. For a while, I really was doing the thing where whenever I would have an urge and I would allow the urge, I'm allowing it to exist. I'm like not wishing it away. I'm not resisting it. I'm not giving in to it, but I'm just allowing it to be there. You know, like, oh, hello, urge. You're hanging out with me right now. Okay, that's cool. And then after I would allow it for about 10 minutes, I would put my quarter in my jar and that would be rewarding me for resisting, you know, for not resisting, for sitting with it, from sitting with that urge. And it really was um, really helpful to try that for a while. I got out of the habit of doing that because 
I was finding that I just didn't need to. Um, that all the other things working together was, were making it either so the, the urges weren't coming because I wasn't exposing myself to the kind of food that was causing me to have like visual cues. Um, but also when I would have a thought like I would like to have more of this even though I'm full or I would like to eat that thing that is not what I wrote down, that's another, for me, once I write it down, that's what I'm eating, right? I can change my plan tomorrow, but that keeps me safe by if once I write it down, I'm eating that, okay? So it's not just food. It's also like I'll want to go on Facebook when I'm supposed to be working or something like that. Um, yeah, so any kind of time when you want to do something else to change your state so all the ways that people like buffer or procrastinate I like um, Brooke Castillo says buffering is like when you're doing something else instead of having the feeling that you would be having if you weren't doing that thing so it could be drinking could be eating too much could be shopping could be goofing around when you're supposed to be working on something that's important to you, all of those things. Okay, so what the, those things taken together are really what I'm doing. So it's, it's a lot of journaling, a lot of it happens in journals, it's a lot of noticing my thoughts, it's a lot of sitting with my cravings instead of acting on them or resisting them and the food is just a small part of it. It's also getting enough sleep. Uh, without sleep, you don't have the resistance. It's much harder to have the resistance to give in to everything. And I also actively seek out support, give support. Um, I actively keep learning so that I keep developing new techniques for myself and trying things at work and trying experiments, like trying a, a 100 day no way in um, system. So that's what I'm doing um, for the people that asked. Chime in in the comments and tell me, do you, can you think of anything I missed? Um, and what do you do? And have you ever thought of it as an overall system? And how do you keep yourself accountable? All right, I'd love to hear it. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.